All right, so here is part three. We're going to go over uh, some of the formatting properties of the code itself, as well as uh, types of comments that we can use. Okay. So one of the things I want to I want to show you is that a command does not have to exist on one line. So let's say we wanted to say C out arrow arrow welcome to C plus plus, and then we'll go over here and make a new line, and we'll let's say we want to line these up. All right. So that's on two lines. Maybe it'll make it easier to read. You know, it depends on how you want to structure your, your code so it's easiest for you. The reason that we can do that is because the compiler is going to read this line and then it's going to get to here and it's going to continue on to the next line, which is just a continuation of this. So this is where the semicolon is incredibly important because the compiler is not going to stop running the cout command until it runs into one of these guys. Right. So you can, this is legal syntax. Right. You know, you can get away with this. So you can also add down here this uh, welcome to C++ end line, and we're going to concatenate these together, and uh, let's add another string, okay. another string of characters. Uh, what, what should we put here? Uh, this is the second line. This is the second line. So we can uh, press F9 and compile this program. And if you'll notice, there was no end line at the end of that second line. Aha, you see that? So the press enter to continue was actually concatenated right up against this. Right. So, or I'm sorry, I pressed any key to continue. Oh, I keep right. saying press enter. Yeah. So how do we do that? We could actually do another end L, or was there yeah. another way you wanted to show? Oh, sure. At the end of the quotations for the second line. This spot right here. Right. We can just put a backslash N. Backslash N. And that's the same thing as putting an end line at the end. This is a this is telling the compiler new line. Right. Now the backslash is actually important when you start working with strings because the backslash says the character following this is a special character. Exactly. So let's run this program and take a look at it. We'll press F9 again. Now it says this. So what if I wanted to say in the second line, if what if I wanted to have second in quotation marks? If I were to do something like this, the program will get kind of confused. Let's press F9 and see what the compiler says to us. Oh, what is go. this? Expected semicolon before this. So it was expecting to end it right here. And if you'll notice, this is the and line are in red, mm -hmm. whereas second is in black. Right. So this will automatically color quotated strings. But there is a way that we can actually print out. Oh, yes. So what we can do is right oh. before it. Just put in a backslash. Put in a backslash. Now. And I'm going to do that again for this one right over here. What this is saying is it's saying the following character, take it literally. Right. Print out exactly what this is. Now, there are special characters. Backslash N is one of those special characters. And this is the new line. And there's a couple other ones. But let's run this and make sure that this prints out exactly the way that we want it to. F9. Ah. There you go. So right. this is the second line. Absolutely. All right, take it All over, right. Brian. So now, uh, now we're going to take a quick look at... Um, comments. Okay. So as we saw before when we typed in basic.cpp, at the beginning of the line there's two forward slashes. Now this doesn't have to be on its own line. So like let's say we wanted to make a comment after system pause. Okay. So we'll go down to system pause command and at the end we'll put in a space and backslash back forward slash forward slash I'm sorry. And we'll type in this is the command to pause the program before it closes. That's good enough. Okay. And uh, so that way you can kind of make notations. So if you have a hundred pages of code, you don't get completely lost. You know, you right? Can make like little little notes. Like if you were giving this program to somebody else, they could read the code and very easily interpret what's going on. Or you, you yourself. I know that you and I have both had programming projects where we went back, like a few weeks or a few months <laughs> right. later, and had co no idea what we were doing because we didn't comment it. We were just kind of writing in the heat of the moment. So it's really important to get used to these comments. But this isn't the only kind of comment. This is what's called a single line comment. Right. So there's a different kind of comment. There's a block comment. Mm -hmm. So let's say we want to have, uh, you know, let's say we want to section out the whole C out bit of code. Okay. Like Before if you wanted to make all of this not execute. Right. Okay. So let's say something goes wrong. We kind of want to isolate chunks and pieces and see how it runs. So at the beginning of C out, uh, we'll do a forward slash asterisk. Or shift eight, right? And at the end of where we want it to stop commenting, we'll do an asterisk forward slash. All right. So we have this piece of code. You'll notice that it's in italics and it's also coming up in blue. This chunk of code will now be ignored by the compiler. Right. So this is a simple way to isolate lines of code. Perhaps maybe if you're debugging, 
and you want to you know, see if this piece of code is causing a problem, uh, this is a good way to do it. Also, a lot of people will use block comments to start their programs. Like, for instance, we could just erase this, do this, do this. And then we have space where we can type whatever we want. Right. This is a basic C program. And I can come down to the next line. Basic.cpp. Yeah, and I could just write. And all of that's commented. Right, and we could also do, like, the date if we want to. What do we have today? Today is 05-20-2006. Uh, right. Does that look about right? Uh, I guess. I don't I don't really know. That I think that's what the date is. All right. Uh, so this, you know, so we have a nice little heading for our program here. Now, another thing people also use block comments for are for making distinct sections of their program. So between using namespace standard and int main, let's say we want to, you know, clearly mark this is where we stop defining stuff, this is where we start a new function. I'm going to erase these comments. Okay. Even though we should have demonstrated how it doesn't execute, right. you can try it yourself. Yeah. I guarantee you it will work. Mm -hmm. uh, so as Brian was saying, between these two, uh, we, you want to write a block comment? We'll just do a, a you know a big a big line of asterisks or you know a big line of uh, dashes or anything that you want. This is a good way to segment your code. When you start getting into having a whole bunch of functions on the same page. You can write these giant comment blocks that will be ignored by the compiler, uh, but seen by you, so you can see where all of your functions begin and where all your functions end, so right. it's very easy to go back and reread your code. Mm -hmm. All right. I don't usually do that for a main function, and I, I'm going to get rid of that just for now. Right. I'm also going to get rid of this for space, space purposes. Um, so, but yes, you can do that. And so that's, uh, that basically concludes the section about uh, comments, block comments, and the formatting of your code to make it the easiest uh, possible structure for you to read.